साईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदया साईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदयाईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदया साईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदया साईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदयाईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदया साईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदयाईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदयाईश्वराय विमे सत्यदेवाय धीमे तर्वचोदया Dear devotees you are about to embark on the greatest journey of your life a journey to the core of your inner being please all in a low voice follow the omkar and let your mind reach a quietude of silence All together, let us repeat the pranava. Please sit up straight. 
and in the quietness of your mind, hear the sound of your breathing. Breathe in and out. In. Now, open your eyes and see the light in front of you. This is the light of a candle. Gaze intently at the light. Now, feel the light shining in the center of your forehead. Now half close your eyes and feel the light in the center of your forehead. Now, let that light come down, down your neck to the center of your chest. Imagine a flower, a lotus, opening petal by petal to receive the light. Now the light is resting on the lotus. The lotus disappears, only the light remains. But it is no more the light of the candle. It is a round ball of formless light. It is a light of divinity within you. Feel this light now expand and feel the light going down, down your body into your legs, up to your feet. Feel warmth as the light surges through your limbs. And make this mental vow, O Lord. My legs, touched by the light of your divinity, will always take me only to places of goodness. Feel the light surging upwards, up into your chest, around your shoulders and down into your arms and fingers. Feel the warmth as this light surges through you. Make this mental vow, O Lord. My arms, touched by the light of your divinity, will only yearn to do what is good. Now feel the light surging upwards into your neck and into your face, into your head. And the light now shines in your eyes. Make a vow. My eyes must yearn to see only what is good. Feel the light now shining in your ears. My ears must yearn to hear only what is good. Feel the light now shining on your lips. My lips must yearn to only speak what is good. Now, feel this light now shining into your whole body. The light illumines the body. In your mind, repeat the words, the light is in me. Now feel the light expand. Expand and you are now sitting in a ball of light, in a cone of formless light. Let your mind say, the light is within me. I am in the light. Feel a thrill of this light and now feel this light expanding expanding and filling this entire room with a divine glow and let this light now go beyond this room beyond and beyond spreading ever further to this whole country and beyond this country beyond oceans and beyond nations let this light flow ever outwards to encompass the whole world. Now, imagine yourself, not your physical body, but an inner being within you, like a gigantic divine form, sitting on the globe, 
and the light of your divinity, the light of your love encompassing the whole world. Stay for a moment thrilled in that thought. Now bring into your mind's eye and send your light of love to all the creatures of the world all the animals and insects, creatures that fly or crawl, all of them are God's creatures. Send your light of love now to those whom you dislike or whom you think dislike you. Send your love, send your light of love to them. The same Atma in you is also in them. Let them feel the radiance of your light. Let them feel the radiance of your love. Now, into your mind's eye, bring those you love, your spouse, children, relations, friends, whoever. Bathe them with the divine glow of your love. Feel oneness with the whole world. Feel at peace with yourself. And now, look inside you. Can you imagine? Do you see a ball of light within you? In this ball of light, bring in the form of the Ishtadeva, the divine being that you love and worship. See this form smiling within you. See this divine form raise his hands in blessing. You have shared your love with the world. Now, receive the blessing and darshan of the divine, the divine within. Stay for a moment, thrilled in this thought that you and he are one.
Come on. 
to be able to share with you the Christmas story and the Christmas message of Jesus. But it is really sad that I actually can't be with you. I would love to be with you. You're always lovely to me. You always feed me lots of lovely food <laughs> and put coffee down me. Oh, it's really good. But this, this is the best we can do. But I want to send you greetings from the far south of Leicestershire, from Lutterworth. And I hope that I can encourage you in this, this festive season. And I, I really want you to be filled with hope. Hope that not in the knowledge that God loves us so much. God really loves us. And he loves us so much that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life that is the promise of the father through the son and it's really really wonderful okay then so i want to tell you the christmas story and i want to tell you the meaning behind the christmas story 
and the uh, the story of Jesus is in four different books that are in the Bible. OK, I have a Bible here and it's uh, it's quite a fat book and it's made up of 66 books and four of them of are the biography, if you like, of Jesus. They tell us about his life and his ministry. But out of the four, only only two of them actually give us the um, the story of Jesus's birth. The nativity is what it is known as. So two give them the nativity. One, the Gospel of Mark, doesn't give us anything at all from the beginning, but it talks about the rest of his life and lots of details that aren't in the others. And the Gospel of John actually tells us the theology, the reason, what is going on, the the pitch of the heavens that we cannot see. And um, so I'm going to explain some of that. And it's fascinating. And I love it. I love it so much. So Matthew and Mark, sorry, Matthew and Luke tell us the actual story where an angel appears to a young girl called Mary and says, Mary, don't be afraid. Of course, she's going to be afraid. An angel just turned up. <laughs> don't be afraid. But God has it has favor with you. And you are going to carry the Messiah. He is going to um, cause you to be pregnant. And she is a virgin. And uh she is made pregnant by the Spirit of God himself. And this little baby is going to grow up to be the saviour of the world. It's really quite phenomenal. And there's all sorts of wonderful things happen. The Roman Empire demands a, cent a census. They want to count all the people for tax purposes. <laughs> Government, eh? And um, so everybody, all the males... <clears throat> have to take their families to the place of their birth and where their family name comes from, basically. And so Mary, who's betrothed to Joseph, has to go to Bethlehem. And they go to Bethlehem. And um, when she gets there, because the whole world is in, in turmoil and uh, it's not locked down, it's quite the opposite. Everybody's been told to move. And they get there and because everybody's turning up, there's nowhere to stay. But the innkeeper, who has no rooms, tells them, oh, but I've got a stable. You can go and stay in the stable because you're obviously just about to have a baby. <laughs> so it's all kind of going wrong for Mary at this point. And Joseph is feeling pretty bad because, well... He's not got it all together, has he? He's supposed to be providing and sorting this out and nothing's happened. And here they are in a stable. There's animals and everything in there. Anyway, the baby is born and there's no cradle. So she puts him in a feeding trough. Oh, yes. So he is in a manger. And really for all of Christendom, it's, it's kind of a romantic story. But in actual fact, something so wonderful is revealed. The Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Son of the Living God, isn't born in a palace or in some birthing suite in Dubai or in New York or, or somewhere really wonderful and wealthy. No, it's first century Israel. And he's not even in a house. He's in a barn. He's in a stable and he's put in a feeding trough. And this is not normal. It's so not normal. But this is God bringing his salvation into our broken world, into this damaged planet where death and decay reign. God enters into this place. Because he loves people so much. And today you need to know that you are loved. You are loved by the living God. He loves you. So much so that he 
emptied himself of his glory and came on to planet earth in this way and he shows us how much he loves us through the life of jesus jesus reveals the nature and the character of the father and the father's character is this he stoops so low because he loves us so much he didn't want the wealth he didn't want the glory he came as a little baby and was put in a feeding trough and we know how unusual it was because the angel appeared also to some shepherds who lived out on the hills and these shepherds they were humble and they were poor and they might have been hired hands or they might have owned the sheep but these weren't rich people and the angel appears to them and he says a saviour has been born to you in Bethlehem he is Christ the Lord and this is a sign okay this is a sign that you found him because this is really unusual you'll find a baby in a feeding trough <laughs> and there he was and when they went to Bethlehem they saw him and because of what the angel said something really odd is going on the baby will be in a feeding trough they said that there he is he's in a feeding trough just like they said and it, it's wonderful it's a wonderful story <clears throat> but you know what in the gospel of john i'm going to read you some of the gospel of john the right at the beginning and it is the christmas story but it's the reason it's the spiritual reason behind the physical birth and all of that that was going on and the gospel of john says this and it's a little bit tricky so see if you can get a hold of this i'll try and explain it as well in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning that is that is really strange thing to say isn't it in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with god in the beginning right the word so the word the word now um i'm, I'm going to try and explain this a little bit um the word is the the rational principle that governs all things the massive words aren't they but the rational thing it's the not just the spoken word but the word when it's still in the mind actually the word is god it's all his knowledge his power his omniscience his all all those incredible words that describe god that's what the word is the word is also a he so it's obviously a person and was with god and it goes on the word became flesh so the word was with god and the word was god so the word is god and the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and truth what this is telling us is god himself became a man in the person of jesus christ so whenever people think or say why doesn't god sort this world out god is sorting this world out he broke into the world through a little child he came as a baby the baby jesus and then in the gospel of john it goes on to say this now this is even more mind-blowing it says this no one no one has ever seen god no one has ever seen god okay but god the one and only god the one and only who is at the father's side has made him known so god 
the one and only, there's no other God, and nobody's ever seen him, who is at the Father's side and has made the Father known. He has taught us who and what the Father is. When we look at Jesus, we see God, our Father. Jesus is God who became a man. Oh, oh, that is amazing. And that's why we celebrate Christmas. And through God the Son, he brings us life. He loves us. He doesn't want any of us to be lost. And um, he doesn't make mistakes. But why was God the Son born in a stable? Because he was showing us the lengths he is going to, to get you, because he loves you. He loves every one of us. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loves the world. And at Christmas, we've got so much hope especially Christmas 2020. We've had all this COVID and yeah, there's a vaccine, but there's a greater hope than that because we celebrate the fact that God himself came down as a little baby and we celebrate that at Christmas. It is so wonderful. God loves you. God himself became a man. In the person of Jesus Christ so that he can be your saviour and do you know what we all mess up we get things wrong we I don't know we, we we just really really mess up all the time and God knows this so he paid a massive massive price for us so we can actually say the love of the father has caused a price to be paid he has bought us and nobody can take us out of his hand. In fact, he's got the whole world in his hands. He loves the world. He loves the world so much. He is an amazing father. He is wonderful. And he never let us down. I mean, I'm a dad. I am a father. And I know there's been times when I've let my children down. And I love them so much. But God is perfect. And he doesn't let us down. I just want to say to you, have a Merry Christmas. And just understand that you can trust your Father in Heaven because he loves you so much. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be upon you. And I just pray for his blessing on you right now. Lord God, would you bless every single person hearing this may they know your salvation and would you pour faith into their hearts and your love and peace in jesus name amen amen god bless you and have an amazing 2021